Dr. Ben Cheng Wong. He is going to talk about the unreasonable fairness of Ernest is actually a national is a second year student in the CS department and uh, he's working with Ariel Piao. So we can start now. Okay. Uh, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Jin Xing. Um, today I'm going to talk about the field division. This is a joint work with uh, Yanis, Harry, Janice, David Kurokawa, Half Molly, Ariel Pacasia, and Nisakta. Uh, so the topic of uh, uh, this talk is a uh, reasonable uh, fairness of maximum match welfare. Uh, let's jump into the basic uh, setting. So we're, con we're considering uh, individual goods like the house, the picture, cars. Um, we are assuming prayer's evaluation function is additive. That means every prayer evaluates a bundle of items by summing up the value of every single one of them. And our goal is to design a mechanism that can fairly divide those items among prayers. So speaking of the fairness notion, uh, the most famous one is called envy fairness. It says each prayer prefers its own allocation to the allocation of any other prayer. Um, actually, in the setting of cake cutting where every item is divisible, we have a very, um, very classic protocol to solve that. It's called cut and choose. The idea is very simple. Um, for two prayer cases, if we ask the first prayer to cut a cake into two parts, and ask the second prayer to choose the one uh, he or she prefers, and the first prayer choose the remaining one, we can guarantee envy freeness in this setting. Because uh, if the first prayer cut the cake into two equal parts, no matter which part the second prayer is choosing, he is not going to envy the other guy. Um, but the problem is, when it comes to the individual good setting, um, we cannot guarantee this pro property anymore. Uh, the counter example is very, it's very simple. Still, we have two prayer, only one single item. Now this is a divisible, it's a house. So no matter which prayer you give this house to, the other prayer who is not getting this item will be envying the other guy. So this is a counter example. So, so, so how to solve this problem? Um, one idea is to come up with another pro property. Um, actually, we have inspired by, inspired by the, the cut and choose protocol in the cake cutting setting. Uh, we have another property called the mass measure proposed by British as uh, The idea is that we evaluate players mass measure of value by um, maximize his minimum bundle over all possible partition he can make. So, uh, so this is how we use uh, mass mean were in this, uh, in this definition. So it's like we enumerate all possible partition and which we, we want to maximize the minimum bundle of, uh, of those partitions. And the, this mass mean value is exactly the mass mean share value uh, for this prayer. So if each prayer's outcome, uh, if in an allocation, each prayer's outcome is at least his guarantee when we optimally dividing into n bundles where n is the number of prayers and getting the least uh, value, uh, valuable bundle. We say this allocation is satisfied maximum sure. Uh, okay, so let's consider, uh, let's, let's look at quickly talk about previous, uh, previous setting where we have two prayers and one individual uh, item. So in that case, what's the maximum sure value? Uh, two prayer, one item. Uh, that would be zero, right? So previous counter, counter example is not counter example in this uh, fairness notion. Okay, so, uh, this is a very important property. So in order to understand this property well, let's look at this example. Suppose we have three prayer and seven items uh, that house picture, cards, rings. And here comes the first prayer. His valuation function can be indicated by those numbers above the pictures. Uh, since he has two humongous items, see the house uh, was 30, the picture was 50. So in that case, 
uh, in order to maximize the minimum bundle in, the, in a partition, the best way to do the partition is something like this. So he can simply put those uh, two humongous items in to separate bundle and put those small items in the third bundle. So in that case, the minimum bundle was 20. Uh, so his mass measure value is 20. Uh, do we know how many partitions we have to make? Uh, three, because uh, I mentioned uh, there, are, there are three verbs. So you need to make a partition um, uh, containing the same number of bundle as uh, the number of verbs. OK, so another case. OK, here comes the second prayer. Uh, his variation uh, function can be indicated by those numbers below the picture. Uh, so in this case, he would like to propose another partition associated with his mass measure value, which would be something like this. So in that case, the minimum bundle was 30. So his mass measure value is 30. OK, so everyone here. Uh, so let's jump into uh, some relevant results about mass measure value. Actually, we have some negative results about mass measure. Uh, the first result shows that for any, for at least three queries, uh, there exists an additive valuation function that does not admit a mass measure allocation. That means mass measure allocation doesn't always exist. So, in order to to consider a uh, fair uh, allocation in terms of uh, uh, mass mean sure something like this, we, we can get the, the approximate result. Uh, currently, the, the best approximation ratio we can get is two thirds. So what's the approximate mass mean sure? Uh, if we can guarantee that every player uh, can get at least <laughs> alpha times his mass mean Share value in an allocation. Uh, we say this allocation satisfy alpha approximates mass measure. So the best approximation we can get is around two thirds for general number of queries. Uh, although the, the the theoretical result seems pretty bad, we we still have a very good uh, real data data performance. Um, some research work has shown a full mass measure allocation can always be found in uh, practice by making some assumption about the distribution of valuation function or uh, based on the, the real, real world data. Okay, speaking of the, the practical application, I would like to mention a website called the Split. So this is a website doing uh, tons of fair uh, division things. Uh, it has lots of uh, application, like a rented division and credit division. If you want to divide the credit in a paper uh, based on the contribution to a paper among users, we can use this website to do that. Um, so one application in this website is called uh, the fair division for indivisible goods. Uh, the way this website is doing this is to consider a fairness hierarchy which can be described by envy freeness, proportionality, and mass measure. So proportionality is the, the fair notion. Um, it says that um, if every queer can get at least one over n times his value over everything, um, uh, then we say this uh, allocation satisfies proportionality. Uh, so since we, we, we say this is a hierarchy, that means we have some implication. Um, uh, apparently, we have a result that saying that uh, everything implies proportionality, and proportionality implies mass measure. So everything is the strongest uh, fair, fairness notion we can get. Um, so the protocol this website is using is uh, to find the best criterion in this hierarchy. And then we try to maximize the utilitarian social welfare subject to that uh, criterion. So what's the utilitarian uh, social welfare? Uh, that's uh, uh, the welfare that maximizes the minimum uh, utility for among player. Okay, um, 
this protocol seems pretty good. However, we got a, a companion email from a user using this website at the beginning of this year. Um, so he mentioned that an example. Uh, that seems pretty unfair in terms of the, the out, output of this website. Get it. Uh, so this example, uh, this, is, this is an example um, where we have a flipper and five <laughs> identical items, uh, five candies. So guess what's the output this website was giving to this user? So the outcome is something like this. It seems pretty bad because if you are the second lady or the third guy, you must be extremely jealous about what the first player is getting, right? Uh, why, this, why this website provides such a very bad outcome? So let's look back to the hierarchy again. The first part of protocol is to find uh, the best criterion in this hierarchy. Apparently, we cannot achieve uh, any freeness and proportionality. So let, let's talk about proportionality. So everyone should get at least five over three to be happy, right? But uh, all possible outcomes should be integer. So that means everyone should be getting at least two candies. However, we have only five candies, so it's impossible for us to get to guarantee proportionality. And fairness is a stronger notion than proportionality, so it's definitely not working. And so then we need to consider a mass measure. So what's a mass measure value in this case? We have three per five candies. One. Uh, yeah, it's one. So in that case, this allocation definitely satisfies a mass measure. And our goal is to find the allocation that maximizes the utilitarian <laughs> uh, social welfare subject to mass measure. Okay, so we, we subject to this uh, mass measure restriction, we want to maximize the minimum utility. However, based on the same logic, uh, no matter how you allocate items to pairs, there must be one pair who gets only one candy, and you cannot increase this uh, minimum utility. So this allocation actually maximizes the utilitarian uh, social welfare subject to a mass injury. Um, so this problem drew us to think uh, the underlying problem of the, the bare notion we have. So currently, uh, previous, uh, these three uh, fairness uh, notions cannot capture uh, this case well. So, another, an, so, so just talk about this case. Uh, if you are a lady, you envy the, the first guy so badly because he got three candies, you, you got only one, right? So even you remove one of the, the candy, one candy from that guy, you still envy him. So, um, so how can we describe uh, this feeling, this jealous? Um, so let's go back to previous uh, uh, fairness notion we have, uh, m fairness. Since m fairness doesn't set, uh, doesn't exist for sure uh, in individual group setting, we can consider a weaker version called m fairness up to one good. So in that case, player I may envy the other player J but the envy can be eliminated by removing a single good from that player J. So previous setting, um, in previous setting, uh, th this allocation doesn't satisfy any previous up to one, right? So we might be thinking, what's the protocol that can guarantee every previous up to one good? Uh, actually, we have a very trivial result. The protocol is very simple. It's called a draft protocol, DP. Um, so in this protocol, agents uh, choose pieces in a rotating fashion, like one to n, one to n, one to n. So it, so it goes basically like this. We have a, a pool of items, and uh, we 
we label a player by one to n, and the first player comes to uh, and he chooses the favor his favorite item from the board. And here comes the second player, he chooses his favorite. And then the third player, fourth player, the end player, and one player, second player, the end player. So it's, the protocol is very simple. And why does Java uh, protocol guarantee every frame is up to one? This is very. Uh, yeah, exactly. So the idea is very simple because after after you remove the uh, first item the other player is choosing at the first run, you are always choosing item ahead of the other player, right? So you can think about like uh, if you have second player, you, you are second player. Uh, your opponent is uh, you wanna. Uh, you want to see the first player. If you remove the, the first item, the first player is getting at the first run, then, and then you are getting an item, and the first player gets an item, and you get an item, the first player gets an item. You are always getting an item ahead of the first player, right, in that case. So you won't be jealous after removing that item. So uh, that protocol definitely uh, guarantee MP3 is up to one good. But should we just be satisfied by having MV3 in software. Definitely not. So let's look at a very fundamental property in the efficient notion. It's called a vertical optimality. Uh, if an allocation uh, satisfies vertical optimality, that means we cannot find another alternative allocation where, uh, which can make some queries tricky better off without making any queries tricky worse off. So the question is uh, whether previous JAP protocol satisfied protocol optimality. Okay, the answer is no. So let's, let's look at this example, the complex example. Suppose we have two agents and four items. And the variation function can be indicated by uh, these eight numbers. And the first number indicates the value for uh, the first prayer, the second number indicates the value for the second prayer. And we have four items. And the drafting order is one, two, one, two. So let's do the simulation. First of all, first prayer takes his favorite item, which is the first item, because 1.5 is apparently larger than And the second prayer chooses one item. And the first prayer chooses another item, and the second player choose the last item. So what's the payoff? The first player's payoff will be 2.5. And the second player's payoff is two. However, this allocation doesn't satisfy parental optimality because we come up with another much better allocation where the first player gets those three items ending up with his payoff three. And the second player gets his humongous item with value 100. So the payoff factor is to 100, which is pretty better than um, previous payoff factor 2.5. So that protocol doesn't satisfy protocol optimality. Uh, so what can you do? OK, here comes to uh, the, the main definition of our talk, the ultimate solution for fail division. The maximum Nash welfare. Uh, we use M and W for sure. So the definition is very simple. If an allocation uh, maximizes the Nash welfare, social welfare, which is the product of the utilities, uh, we say this allocation satisfies maximum Nash welfare. So this is a very, very straightforward uh, notion because we just need to find an allocation that maximizes the product of every city. And we can, we can say this, this satisfies Nash welfare. Um, OK, in order to give you a better understanding about this, uh, this very new solution, let's look at this example. Suppose we have two players and three items. And the first lady, the lady evaluates those items with uh, valuation function four, three, and three. So this is a valuation vector. 
And this guy's valuation vector is 1, 3, and 6. So let's guess what's the maximum mass welfare allocation in this case. See who can get the number. Charlie. Yeah. So how to do the allocation? Pretty good. So this is exactly the allocation. So in that case, uh, the lady get his utility seven, and guys uh, get his payoff six, and the Nash product is forty-two. <coughs> so this is the allocation. They maximize the Nash wafer. Uh, Nash wafer. Okay, let's uh, jump back to uh, our previous companion letter from the US of students again. So what's the allocation again? What's the allocation that maximizes the Nash welfare in this uh, unit setting? It will be something like this, right? Because in this case, the Nash welfare will be two times two times one. That would be four, which is larger than three. Three times one times four. So the problem in this specific case, so uh, actually not only can we solve this specific case, we can also guarantee lots of other good property for maximum Nash welfare. So here comes our first result. Uh, so the first thing is that maximum Nash welfare satisfy any fairness up to one good as well as total optimality. So this answer the question I just asked, whether we can come up with a purpose satisfying EF1 and PO. And the, th the second theorem says, uh, any friend is satisfied um, pi n approximates matching uh, and this result is tight. Okay, so let's jump into the proof for the first theorem. Uh, in order to prove that maximum Nash welfare satisfy any friend is up to one good, uh, we take the notion uh, A as the maximum Nash welfare allocation. Assuming A doesn't satisfy MV3 up to 1, that means we can find um, triple I and J where I and B straight after removing any one good from J's bundle because uh, otherwise the key square is not the F1. And we need to find a special item uh, in J's bundle uh, marked by G star, uh, which minimize the, the value ratio between uh, player, uh, agent J and agent I. And we are claiming that uh, Nash welfare increases when we move this special item G star from J's bundle to I's bundle. And that can make a contradiction to uh, our previous uh, assumption that A doesn't satisfy any friends up to one because of uh, I's jealous to J's bundle. <coughs> okay, so how to prove that? Let's take a no uh, notation of the new allocation where uh, we just move uh, special item G star from J's <coughs> bundle to I's bundle. And then uh, we have these three inequality. And by simple algebra deduction, we can show the equivalent of these three uh, inequality. So the first inequality is saying that the, 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 the Nash wafer of the new allocation is strictly larger than uh, the previous Nash wafer, which makes the contradiction. That's our goal, right? In order to show that, uh, since we have the equivalent relationship between these three inequality, we we can simply show uh, oh we can simply show the the correctness of this inequality to convey, um, to to make a conclusion to make a contradiction. Right? So why uh, why this is equivalent? Uh, because uh, the only difference between old allocation and new allocation is the value in bundle i and bundle j, right? 
because we only move one item from J's bundle to I's bundle, we, does, uh, we don't inference the value of other bundle, right? So if we, 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 we calculate um, the new, uh, new Nash welfare over the old Nash welfare, we can cancel out all the value in other bundle, right? And this term, uh, this term represents the, the ratio between, um, between these two allocations for J bundle. And this term represents the ratio uh, between two allocations at I bundle. And if we just explain this, and we can cancel out the one term, and we move uh, one, like uh, this term, uh, to the right hand side, and somehow we can get this in. This is how we get the, the third inequality. So we can finish the proof by showing the last inequality. So, uh, so we are going to show this inequality by showing two facts. The first fact can be deducted by the definition of G star. Since G star is the, the item that minimize the, the value ratio between uh, i square and j square. So the ratio for this single item should be upper bounded the, uh, by the ratio of the whole bundle. The ratio between these two bundles. So this is the first inequality. And the second fact uh, can be deducted by assuming uh, EF1 not <coughs> being satisfied. Uh, since EF1 is not satisfied, that means no matter how we remove one item from bundle J, player I still envy player J. So, so in that case, the, the value from his perspective, the value of this bundle minus the value of this item should be strictly higher than the value of his, item, his bundle. So this is the second question. And the magic is we can do the multiplication and the product of one and two is exactly, see, this term comes here, this term comes here, and these two, we get the result here. And this is exactly the right hand side of the, the, the equal, uh, equal inequality here. And then we can, we can make the contradiction by showing this. Okay, so we finished the first group. Okay. So now I'm going to show the proof of se second lemma, uh, second theorem. So we want to show uh, the allocation that satisfies maximum Nash welfare can guarantee an approximate matching shirt. So in order to show this, uh, we are going to do some magic trick. So let's consider two magic spells. Say uh, I'm a, a, special, a powerful wizard. I come here and I have two spells. The first spell is uh, liquefy. Liquefy item. I can turn an item into water. So, so by using this spell, I can make an item divisible. Like um, if I turn this bottle into a water, everyone can get a fraction of this item. And if someone get like a 0.3 uh, of uh, like a third of this item, and he get the value, uh, which is the a third times the total value of this item. And the second spell is enlarge. If I cast this spell, I can make an item infinitely large. I can make an item worth infinity. So this is the second spell. Okay, here's the observation. Casting these spells cannot reduce the maximum share value. Why this is true? Okay, the reason is very simple. The, first of all, it's very trivial to say uh, enlarging item doesn't reduce the maximum value because enlarging item can only make the value uh, increase, right? So, and liquefy, liquefying item also doesn't reduce the maximum value because it actually gives players more flexibility to equalize uh, the value between bundles in terms of uh, maximizing the minimum bundle in a partition. Okay, so casting this spell cannot reduce mass miniature value. Okay, with this two-power magic spell, let's go into the proof. 
Okay, consider a maximum Nash welfare allocation A, and let's focus on the first period. Uh, we can normalize everything, such as the value of first uh, first bundle was exactly one, and with the beta to be uh, the first period maximum value, and we take a notation G I star representing the largest size in a bundle I. Uh, and we take the value, uh, we use xi to represent the value of this largest item. Okay, here is the main part. Now, we're going to cast some spells. First of all, we enlarge all those largest items if the value of the, those largest items is, is at least uh, beta for uh, bundle 2, 3, 2, n. And at the second part, uh, we liquefy all other items which are not in large people. So we can get a new mass measure value after casting those spell. And uh, what I'm going to show that this component at the left hand side is the new mass measure value and the right hand side is the previous mass measure value. Uh, <laughs> this is the inequality, the inequality sign is uh, greater than or equal to because, uh, because casting those spells doesn't reduce the mass measure value. So why the, the component at left hand side is, is that the, measurement, the new mass measure uh, value? Well, this is true. Okay, since we have, uh, after using this spell, we have uh, a bunch of infinite items, right? So the best way to maximize the minimum bundle would be uh, putting those infinite items into some, um, some single bundle separately, uh, separately, right? And say we, have, uh, say we have 10 bundles and we have three uh, infinite items. We just use these three infinite items to occupy three positions. And then uh, all other items are liquefied, right? So we can pour those items like pouring water into those empty bundles and every bundle can have the same value. And in that case, we can show the, uh, the player can actually maximize his minimum value. So the, uh, the de denominator is the number of those empty bundles after putting those infinite items in. And the, uh, th this part represents the total value of those liquefied items. So this is exactly how the, the new mass measure value is. And then the next thing we need to show is the upper bound of, um, of this component. Uh, well, we're going to show this at the next slide. Uh, this is uh, a demo we're going to use. And by using this, by using this, um, the, the fact the, the spell monotone density, we can finish the proof by simple algebra. Okay, so the question is how to prove this demo? Um, by the definition of um, maximum Nash welfare allocation, uh, we, can, we can say that any other allocation cannot provide a higher Mass, uh, higher Nash welfare than previous allocation. So what's the new alternative allocation we're considering? So in this case, if we move this, uh, this largest item GI star from bundle I to first previous bundle, we can get another allocation. And this is the Nash product for these two, these two bundle. And this is the Nash product for, pre uh, this is a product of these two uh, of values for bundle I and bundle I in previous, uh, bundle one and bundle I in previous allocation. Since all the value of other bundle should be the same, so we can cancel out all other terms. So we have this inequality, and we can get the second inequality. And using this definition again, let's consider another allocation uh, where bundle I contains A1 plus AI minus GI star, and bundle I contains only one item, which is the largest item GI star. And we can get another inequality. And we take this inequality 
here into this inequality, and we can get the result here. And we cancel this term out, and then we can have uh, this inequality, which is uh, this, which is one part in this uh, minimum. On the other hand, we have already shown maximum Nash welfare implies uh, MV freeness up to one third. That means after removing the largest item GI star from bundle I, play I shouldn't be averaging um, the the pre uh, ice bundle, right? Shouldn't be averaging uh, ice per. So in that case, we have this inequality. So in conclusion, we we prove this thing. Okay, so this is the whole proof. Um, since we have used so many powerful spells, it seems pretty unlikely that this result, this, um, this bond is tight. But surprisingly, we have shown that uh, this, this bond is tight. And this is the, the, the example, the exact tight, <laughs> tight example, where uh, the first we get a, a huge item, and every uh, other player gets two items. One big or one one small. Okay, so so at the end of this analysis, we can we can show this is the, the tight example. Okay, um, okay, let's let's look back to to that. Okay, let's look back to to the the approximate ratio here we have here. Okay, so when the number of prayer n goes to infinity, this approximate ratio seems pretty bad because this is like uh, one over square root of n, right? So when n goes to infinity, we can guarantee nothing. It's like it goes to zero. But we don't need to be sad about it because, um, because uh, we have already shown that the maximum net welfare solution in the practical data seems pretty well. And uh, based on the data from split, uh, split it, uh, with 95 percentage uh, data, we can guarantee the full maximum share value um, if we are providing, uh, mass, per, per, providing the maximum net welfare solution. Okay, let's, uh, let's go to the conclusion page. So throughout the whole talk, I'm going to convince you that maximum Nash welfare is the ultimate solution for um, fairness, uh, fair division. So why this is, this is true? First of all, uh, maximum Nash welfare implies uh, MV fairness up to one, parental optimality, and approximate maximum share and a very good performance in the practical data. Another advantage of this notion is that this is very simple. Unlike the mass mean share, we need to calculate the maximum, the mass mean thing. This is, this is empty hard. So, so, and the notion is very, very simple. We just want to find an allocation that maximizes the, the, the product of utility. And another thing about saying this is simple um, is that this protocol actually certified um, scale-free be because we, we want to maximize the product. So we don't need to do any normalization. Everyone can just report their true value upon the items. And another advantage, uh, a very um, underlying goodness about this uh, notion is that it actually implies lots of good properties for divisible good setting. So if we use the maximum Nash welfare protocol to calculate uh, the allocation in the k cutting setting, so we can actually guarantee every fairness because, um, because we can regard the divisible item as the infinite numbers of tiny items that sum up to the total value. So in that case, uh, as we know, maximum Nash welfare implies MV3 is up to one. 
that means um, if we allocate those uh, tiny items to prayers, nobody is gonna envy the other guy by removing a tiny item from his bundle. And as we cut those uh, cake into infinitely, infinitely small pieces, uh, we, this this envy amount would go to zero. So so it would converge to envy And uh, that's pretty good. And the the most important thing about Messman Nash Warfare is that it actually stands at a sweet spot between the utilitarian and the egalitarian social welfare, uh, where the utilitarian capture the efficiency and the egalitarian capture the fairness. So Messman Nash Warfare is the allocation, is the fairness notion that can capture both important things in the item allocation problem. So this is all. Thank you. Uh, actually, this is also a bit hard. <laughs> but, uh, but actually, we have, um, we, we have a, actually, I didn't show this. So we, we can use an uh, integer program to, to calculate this. And the performance is pretty good uh, for more than 1,000 uh, items. And around 10 periods, we can calculate the maximum natural uh, welfare uh, in, like, within, like, 10 seconds. Uh, actually, it also works. So if we uh, if we can guarantee epsilon, uh, like one minus epsilon approximate maximum natural welfare, we can guarantee one plus epsilon MV freeness up to one good. It's not MV freeness up to one good. It's MV freeness up to one plus epsilon good. So so that means after removing uh, the largest item in that bundle times one plus epsilon, you won't be envy that guy. So as you mentioned in your last point, you're trying to find some sweet spot between the minimum to maximize the minimum and maximize the sum, right? Yeah, yeah. So you're basically using sub-minimum, which is like max sum of loss. Mm. So what if you try to maximize the sum of square roots or any, any Actually, this is a very excellent question. We ha uh, actually, I, I only show some results in, uh, in the, this is uh, some results in a paper I just submitted to EC. So we have some other um, fairness notion, like uh, another no notion is called a proportional fairness. Uh, it somehow captures uh, what you said. We have a, a spectrum of, of this whole thing, how to, how to scale the, the extent of uh, the efficiency in comparison to the, the extent to the film. So these are two directions. So. Uh, because this is very intuitive. Yeah. And we have some other property. It's like you're maximizing the sum of like sum log, yeah. Like log of the so yeah. it's like you're utility something added, it's like log of the sum. What, what do you mean? Or uh, sorry, I mean yeah. the, so so actually maximizing not welfare is equivalent to maximizing the summation of log utility. This is is it is that what you're saying? Right, so I'm saying like Mm. So I guess if I just consider my personal utility as being like the sum of the, uh, yeah, the sum of my items and then take the log, then it's sort of like you're summing all of our utilities, except like my each person's utility is not additive, it's like this concave function. Okay. I don't uh, know if that's useful. Okay. That's a pretty weird utility. Yeah. Any more questions? Let's take this figure.